Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Ritchie, and I want to thank you for joining me today. You know, we're headed into the, the depths of winter, and one thing you probably noticed is that in winter, the air is just very, very dry. Well, this affects your furniture, it affects static electricity around the home, so be careful shuffling around on the carpet. But just as importantly, think about what the dry air does to your dry eyes. And we've done a number of sessions on dry eye before, but I want to come back to it today and just talk a little bit more because there's a new wrinkle in the diagnosis and the treatment of dry eye. Now we've talked about the symptoms of dry eye, the scratchy, burny feeling, excess tearing, which is ironic, but a symptom of dry eye, as well as blurred vision, and for some people, just a very consistent, achy feeling in the eyes. In diagnosing dry eye, we always depended really very heavily on your symptoms. What you tell us how the eye feels, that kind of information is crucial. The tests for dry eye were just not very good. Up until now, we've depended on you to tell us about it. But now, we actually have a test fairly new, something that we've been doing here in the office only for the last couple of months or so, that measures the quality of the tears that you make. So many of you have heard us talk about, well, you make tears, but they don't function. Well, that's kind of hard to just take on faith. Now we have a test that will demonstrate that, and it's called the tear osmolality test. What this does is it measures the nutrients that are in the tears and the concentration of those nutrients. It also measures the minerals. So together, the nutrients and the minerals give us, um, in essence, a salinity. What's the saltiness of your tears? The more salty they are, the, the more faulty they are. So we look at this test and it's a scale. And I will show you, we have some things here that can lay this out for us just a little bit better. This is the dry eye osmolality scale. What it says here is the disease severity scale. But what it's really measuring is the saltiness of the tears. Normal is anywhere below 300. For the average person, 280 is going to be a very good score. 300 is very borderline. And as we go up above 320, we're going to have pretty significant dry eye symptoms. And like I said, this is a degree of saltiness. So you can see the number goes up as the tears get more concentrated and more salty. More concentration means less water in your tears and less mucus and oil. So what I'd like to do at this point is a little demonstration of what's involved in doing a tear osmolality test. As you can see, the device is very small and the tip is very small. It does not require any eye drops to numb the eye. In fact, this test should be done without numbing drops. All I did or all I do is look slightly away while Emily gets the sample. The sample comes up very quickly and she then has 45 seconds to put it into the machine to uh, read the number. Here you can see the machine as it reads the number and my right eye tests at 295. My left eye similarly tests at about 286. This is better for me than I did initially. So I have been using warm compresses twice a day and that's really helped with my dryness. Um, one thing that we do look for, we will always test both eyes because a disparity or a discrepancy from one eye to the other is an indication of dryness. Say for example, one eye reads 295, like my right eye, but the other eye reads 315 that would suggest that both eyes are pretty dry. So, as you can see, we now have an actual number that we can put on your dry eye. As mentioned, 
This test is really good at not only diagnosing your dry eyes, but at monitoring progress. As the treatment helps, the numbers will come down. Like we talked about, this is a test that's pretty simple to do. It's covered by most insurance companies, uh, and it's something we can use to actually monitor progress and treatment success with dry eye. Thank you again for joining me.